Ladies and germans, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. I'm Rang Ru, hello, hello, hello. And thank you guys so much for this. We're kind of going with a little bit of a non-standard the last couple of weeks. I've been away, um, you know, escaping from the US of A for a bit. And uh, if you live in the US, you understand why. But let's get back to what's going on here. We have ourselves another 1v1 uh, going on between two Axis divisions over here on Slitsk Vest. But Rang, tell us, is who's bringing what to the fight? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have astonishingly, astonishingly, astonished man playing as a first Lovas Hungarian cavalry, Reev Maverick Ingham. And on the right-hand side, we have Ganebs playing as 14th Infantry with a nice, solid, balanced income. I actually think I got the uh, side wrong in terms of colors, but nonetheless, those are our two players. Yeah, I was going to say also as well, are you sure it's Maverick Income? Wanna... For, for Astonished? Astonished. Oh, it's Vanguard! I was going to say, I'm not it's seeing 180 away. anywhere, but hey, if, if that's what you see, it's what you see. Yeah, it's no bullseye. Um, but tell me, so look at this right now, 14th versus Hungarians. I mean, the Hungarians, we've talked we've talked these guys up quite a bit, and we see a lot of Turan mm -hmm. Turans to the north. Their infantry is definitely beastly. How's it yeah. going to match up against the 14th? Honestly, on this map, it's going to be pretty hard to be going all Hungarian. It's a very open map, and if there's Tehran to run, you really don't have a good time in open field. Our 14th got a lot of good AT guns, they got some Stooks, some Panthers, and they also have some pretty good infantry options as well. So, I, I'm really curious to see how Astonished will uh, be able to play us out. You know, it's one of those things I, I very much want to agree with you, but of course that just wouldn't be our style if we agreed on everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like if the Hungarians can work the flanks, the 14th may have a much harder time than you kind of posit. We we have definitely seen a lot of MP44s, especially we see two squads to the south over here on the left uh, for Gnibs, or Gnibs rather. Um, but all those forests, I feel like the Hungarians should be able to get their light tanks in nice and close, get their infantry nice and close, and... I don't know, do you really think Grenadiers, unsupported, are going to be able to last? Yeah, Grenadiers by themselves aren't going to do all that well compared to the fully semi-automatic rifle squad that the Hungarians bring out to the field. But yeah, mm -hmm. you're, you're correct. Pretty much playing on the flanks will be uh, Astonished Man's best bet. I mean, I didn't really realize either that the, the Recon Terrans are actually a slightly undergunned variant of the regular Terrans, and that, that, that's really saying something. Yeah, it's like a slightly earlier tank called a toady. Mm -hmm. It's it pretty much has that. Um, it's just like a small little twenty mil AP gun, and it's pretty pathetic when you have a twenty. Oh no, it's it's kind of fully automatic. Never mind. It's like a hundred and five rounds. Yeah, it's an absolutely insane rate of fire. Mm -hmm. But yeah. of course, you're bringing that to the field not because you're super concerned about. Well, I would say the the rate of fire, but because you're super concerned about the recon of it. So. Mm -hmm. And it's a tank for 15 points. That's a pretty good deal for a tank. Even... It's, it's an armored car for 15 points. Let's not get too <laughs> excessive here. Armored car with tracks along the reels. They come free. They come, they come with the armored car. It's a half tank, or as I like to call it, a hank. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, an early anti-tank got down to the south has been taken on out. That Luke's yeah. is going to have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm actually really uh, curious seeing a spotter or artillery plane being brought out early on by Sonus Man. A very good call, as the Hungarian spotter planes are pretty deadly, and he's going to be a lovely strike on his clump of infantry in the town. I guess the thing I'm surprised about is after we just talked about trying to work the flanks, we just see all of this material going right into the center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pushing the town is a pretty good bet for... For Sonics, they do have a bit of cover with the actual buildings and whatnot. It's it's not a lot of cover, mind you, if you exit the town or kind of an open field. But this this could work out if you manage to get his infantry game on point. That's asking an awful lot. I mean, luckily enough for those infantry... Ooh, never mind. That infantry just got plastered by the artillery. Mm -hmm. There's one Stoss Troop, and that's keeping everything kind of up and running. Outside of that, I don't really relish their chances. Yeah, and we got like uh, yeah, we got pretty much a Hungarian pack forty and the Hungarian forty mil going at it on the stuck, and that's going to be keeping it at bay. But yeah, with the um, Hungarian infantry moving through the town, 
and currently the German guy is being pinned down, they should be able to fully capture it. Indeed they shall. An early reinforcements coming on in. We have your flak tw uh, 20 mil coming in from the west. From the east, actually, yes, we're going to bring in the 105 cannons. That's a good call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That artillery is definitely going to help out. Especially if he decides to use a, you know, a little bit of smoke play. Uh, Junker coming in. Oh, wow, this is actually, this, this is the ground attack Junker, the strafing Junker. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I've really seen that very often for the 14th. No, no, you don't. It's a pretty... It's not the best fighter plane in the road, for obvious reasons. It probably prefers fighting at night. But it's still a pretty decent plane, especially when you get behind something. You do have three 20mm cannons. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to be an impressive plane when the guy you're shooting can't shoot back. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are seeing a new wave of infantry being brought over here to the center position. Looks like Neves is dry, or Knives, rather. You're setting himself up for a resumption of that push right along the center line. Yeah, bringing a lot of MP44 troops and... Yeah, those MP44 troops are going to be really, really scared to go up against the Hungarians. Uh, meanwhile, to the south, there is some friction happening here. Unfortunately for the Hungarians, their tanks are continue to be, you know, shredded like the papier-mâché that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Husaroks and the Angam are going to try it. The Arkentists are just... It's not go it's not looking pretty. It, it's its not looking good at all. It's, yeah, really just in terms of long-range engagement distances such as this, Ganebs really has the advantage. Open I guess the thing, I'm looking for artillery. Where's that? Why is that 105? They're finally kicking off. Yep, there we go. First yeah. one's kicking off. But he's aiming... Interestingly, for that 184 behind enemy lines. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Curious decision. Yeah, I don't think he, it's not going to be accurate shots. He's just not going to artillery reserve. Yeah, by now, speaking of artillery reserves, now getting our uh, artillery plane to be even better. He's actually to use it as a spotter for his on map artillery. And even getting a, uh, a heavy bomber J or 88 in a phase. That is definitely a very bizarre call. So why is that so far, why is that so uncommon? Most of the viewers at home. The thing of usually like getting like these twin engine bombers early on A phase, you only get one per card. It's extremely card and efficient. And even though it, you know, drops some pretty big kabooms, all it takes is one fighter plane to knock knock you out and you pretty much lost a card of bombers. Just just like that. Yeah, it doesn't say much either because the Junker is <laughs> not very durable. Oh no, it's a very scary plane going after Junkers. I think his his days are numbered. I feel like he's like it's, a, it's like a cartoon right about now. Uh, I, I I never really recommend taking the CR forty twos, but by God, I really love seeing him on the field. It's just such a such a silly plane. I think it's a style move. Yeah, it's very it's a stylish plane. Don't get me wrong, like the orange puke paint job, the two rings. It's Looks like something out of Flying Circus. And like the Flying Circus, I think its heyday has come and gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, we, we, you forgot to mention the Nimrod, so there is a Nimrod on the field, and uh, he doesn't get the kill this time. But that guy is quite deadly when all is said and done, I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just. Well, when, when your anti aircraft piece has the ability to do 200 millimeters of armor penetration, that's. That's something you wouldn't want to go up against. No, sir. No. This Junker comes back in trying to get some line of sight or something. Um, probably a bad idea. He might even get taken out here. That Nimrod is getting some very good hits, but I think the Junker's just going to be durable enough to escape the carnage. Now the, now the CR? No. Now the, okay, so we have F, uh, a Fockwolf 189. Another artillery strike coming along the center line, and again, this has just held up so much progress, really for both sides, but especially on uh, Gennipes over here. Yeah, it's been seven minutes in and it's still pretty even Stevens in terms of points. Nothing really flipping in anyone's favor, and that's going to be definitely not ideal for Astonished Man, as his Vanguard income is, you know, really benefits right now in any phase, especially if Hungarian just doesn't have the long range capability compared to 14, so he really needs to try to put the pedal to the metal and start not capping some areas. But, you know, here's something impressive. We actually see another 
bomber coming up from Astonishment, which means, like oh. you said, we have two cards, two slots being utilized for two bombers total. Yeah, I, I, I'm fairly certain it was JRATH, maybe one per card. Maybe it might be two per card with Hungarians. I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head, but nonetheless, another good bombing run. Yeah, and that's going to be perfect. I believe he even he knocked out stuck of it. I believe. I actually think that was the forty mil, but yeah, 40 maybe mil, I'm incorrect there. Nonetheless, it was big kabooms, and a stunk is no longer living the stunk life. No, he is not. Um, but I think just as important, they're trying to seek and find that 20 mil, the Flak 38 that's right there. He takes that out, and life becomes a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, there's another one of those uh, CR-42s. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's like such a small plane. It's, it's like watching those dog videos on Reddit, and you're like, oh my gosh, he, he, that's definitely under, like, uh, the, the subreddit all. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, can't, I can't even disagree with that. That's, that's, yeah, such a, that's a funny plane. I'd actually love to see actually shoot something down, that would be fantastic. That's, that'd be like watching, oh my gosh, the ground attack plane, uh, I can't even think of it right now, the one we always make fun of. With its um, single twenty mil cannon, I don't know, but right now Is actually, it a you know German what? Plane? Yes. Oh, ugh. I want to get back to you later on that one. I was like, I was saying, I, we, I, we are finally seeing some action on the center line. Um, shockingly enough, the Hungarians who I thought would be pushing the flanks said, "Screw this noise," and they go, you know, "Hey, diddle, diddle," and they go right up the middle. <laughs> and the middle they sound go, and it's. Yeah, it's working pretty well. Once you get the town, it's relatively easy to hold. There's a lot of open ground between you and said enemy. But, uh... But you gotta get there first. Yeah, you gotta get there first. And whether, whether or not, Sonnets can bring some good defensive AT, long-range AT, such as pack 40s or Hatches to help defend said town. That is certainly fair. Uh, another artillery plane, and he might be able to drop it just in time to pick up this retreating infantry. It's going to be close, but another Stug over here. Okay, the Stug might might just completely and totally shut this push down. Yeah, especially especially two stars. That's going to be a rather nasty stunt to grab against. Yep, and all the Hungarians can do as you approach phase B here is bring in another forty mil and well, a seventy-five mil. So. Hefty, hefty, hefty barrages are potentially there. But the off-map artillery, rather the map artillery, is just still looking for those Flak 38s. Just like whenever he sees an anti-air piece, he's like, you know what, we have to focus all of our effort on that. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a good idea, especially if he's trying to play for more of a heavy air game later on. At the same time, it's probably a bit more of a pain in the ass, as it's Flak 38 are a little bit more, more numerous compared to other AA counterparts, so you have to you have to knock more moles like rack rack a mole, you know, mm -hmm. like one big mole. It's a bunch of small moles, and you only got one hammer. Rack a mole is a pretty hard game. It's what I'm trying to say. I've well, never I've never done good at yet. Well, I, you mean like live, like the real deal? Because I can definitely see that happening. <laughs> First of all, just, have you ever tried to a find them all? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have like all those, like, those circus hammers. Ugh. Ugh. Down south, life is surprising enough again. Going over to the Hungarians. They've gotten into that first tree line. Fantastic mm -hmm. there for them. A couple of DP guards being brought on. Grenadiers, excuse me, being brought on in, as well as a Stug to the south. I'm not going to call it opportunistic, but again, we have to recall that the uh, stealth for him, while being bad can still be very, very deadly in a light forest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not looking too good for Gnebs down south. He really does not much. Oh, he's bringing in the infantry now. A bunch of Pioneer SVTs and some Grenadier DPs. Who so should be able to hold it. He's even got a mortar nearby to help out to deal with the infantry. But yeah, Sonis is putting pretty good pressure down here. It's almost as good to realize that up into the north as well. He's already pushed back. He's, he's killed the first layer of defenders. Mm -hmm. And I think he's just desperately trying to go and get everyone else killed. Um, so that way he can waste the, the material on that uh, Flak 38. Yeah, yeah. And I have to really give it to his uh, recon artillery. Yeah, all the artillery spotter planes, I should say. Because 
They've been calling down constant strikes this match, and they've been getting some fantastic kills in the center. One of the uh, strikes just knocked out Mortar. So, yeah, it's just really on point, and it's keeping all of Gnib's stuff pretty much pinned down and in, in the middle by the town. You mean the JU-88 that's flying off? Uh, no, the Fokker Wolf 189. Oh, there, okay, I just saw that just now. I didn't really see another airstrike coming down. I thought a bombing run, but that was about it, perhaps. Oh, no, it was like one of those long-form bombardments. It was oh, the okay. In the, Got it. In the center town. So I was going to say, the Stug just went down again. I'm actually, we're seeing mm -hmm. one by one Stugs just getting picked off, and the 14th is not blessed with a plethora of vehicles. No, they, they're not the heaviest tank division by any stretch of the imagination. I'm actually quite surprised I haven't seen any Tiger tanks out yet from him. Because they do get a few of them, if I recall. And on a map like his, especially against Hungarians, those Tiger tanks would be fantastic. Well, we're also going to see this giant push to the south. Four half-tracks being brought in for ground support, as well as SVT pioneers, and Grand Fuhrers, mm -hmm. we have Grand Viers. Um, and, and the armor support is conspicuously absent, other than a single Turan. Yup, yeah, yup. Yeah. I mean, Turan should be able to knock out all these SDKF7s pretty quickly. And if he plays his card right, he should be able to avoid the, uh, avoid the stuck through the forest. One would certainly hope so, but uh, stranger things have happened. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I really do like how Ganebs is bringing out quite a lot of these uh, SDKF-7s. Route 14, you get 36 of them, if I recall. And it's a really good transport to have the infantry, because just five more points and like a regular transport, you've you got extra machine gun, which is lovely. Yeah, it allows you to almost play like an American division. Yeah, yeah, it, it gives you a little bit more like half-track mobility, albeit they're not for armored half-tracks. But it's still a half track. You gotta, you gotta take what you can get. Sometimes, you know, especially for the Germans in late 1944, you really gotta take what you can get. I can definitely see that happening. But as we approach uh, the, let's call it the halfway mark in terms of the economy, this is still the time that a Spanish man has to get as big a lead as possible. He's only going to get weaker as time goes on. The Hungarians definitely do fall off. Yeah, his. Best bet is probably this continuous uh, push down south, and then once he manages to take a big trough of land, just try to hold all the forest and yeah, there's just there's a slow defense from the end on out. As yeah, it's Gineb, it's just slowly building up power. He does have a tiger out in the middle and two two tigers, oh, one to two the south. Tigers. Yeah, and, and now a uh, pain train to the south. Yep, pain train. Eight eighty eight. In terms of long range AT, there's really nothing on the Hungarian side that can reliably kill it. I mean, maybe like a Pack forty here or the Nimrod if it manages to get a bit close. But our tiger is really going to be the king of the. Uh, I was going to say jungle, but more of the open fields. King the of the plain. The savanna. The sav yeah, there we go. King of the savanna. <laughs> the Slutsk savanna. Um, it's kind of funny to me, those JU-88s, those the ground attack cannon planes, they were apparently quite sporting chaps. They were firing their entire barrage over the top of that terrain down to the south by Bino. Mm -hmm. um, he actually took absolutely zero stress from that, so I'm not sure if that was intentional, if that was like a minor bug, he lost line of sight or something, I don't know. I mean, probably lost line of sight, I guess. I can also tell you is that there's a... That, 45 mil, it's a pack 184, the, the Russian conversion. Um, and those tanks can't see Jack. <laughs> no, there's no real recon really nearby for the Hungarians, so at 45 mil, he's just gonna have a lovely day dealing with those rather, you know, reek Hungarian tanks in, in terms of armor. Now, I'm not gonna say that there's a huge chance here, but the Yog Panzer down south does give a little bit of hope. To the Hungarian oh. um, defense against these tigers. Yeah, well, well his, his gun's jammed at the moment, so he's not yeah. going to be all that useful. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I made that, that comment. When I spoke in the first place, he, it was working. <laughs> it, it was working, but, you know, now, now someone got some jam down the barrel and I have to clean it out. Probably want to get some pieces of toast and start cleaning it. Lone Star. <laughs> I was not expecting the Space Wars reference, but <laughs> here we are. Uh, meanwhile, to the north, another, um, art, I would say, artillery barrage, another bombing run. Um, 
This is going to keep the infantry, I think, at maybe at arm's length. It's going to be close, because right now we are seeing... Yep, there we go. That was actually perfect. Takes out the leader that was right there. So the Hussars should be able to charge forwards and pick up a couple of nice surrenders. Yep. And is the bomb plane going to get away? No, it doesn't. J or 88 manages to get the uh, kill. But will it get away as it's a Hawker all flying around? And probably... Oh, it definitely so. will. There's, a, there's 20 mils on the ground to put supporting fire. There's no way in, in any hell... Oh, wait, wow. Yeah, Holy just, Jesus. Yeah, had to dawn a Messerschmitt, and, well, Falker all fringe out engagement with his frontal face and armament. But yeah, like you said, that bombing run did slow down Ganabs quite a bit up north. Unfortunately, there's now one Hussar who's just sitting there. You poor yeah. bastard. He is not going to have a good time. Especially since these other tanks are just kind of farting around, trying to find their way through this little tree. Uh, the recon infantry is a little bit too far away. Definitely want to bring up some more infantry Ooh. up north to help secure. Look in the center. Oh, oh! I forgot you have cluster bombers. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's what the one problem with Stukas. A, a little bit slow. A little bit slow. Yeah, I think he was going to try to unmask a bit, but then he uh, kind of. Missed his chance. Mm hmm. That's definitely going to ruin the surprise factor now. Poor astonished man bringing out that initial cluster bomber. Because now, if I was going to have seen that cluster bomber, I'd be like, oh boy, I'm going to need more AA. Because that's his one major threat. I can knock out the tigers relatively quickly. Was that flak feeling to the south? And that's really about it. I mean, the MGs on the tanks are really particularly worthless. Um. And that push to the north has been shut down. Can we also talk about the fact that there's actually an opening recon told these with those, those infantry around them? They've been sitting there the entire game. These guys are just kind of got R&R oh, yeah. for days. It's just enjoying the nice northern town. Now, to be fair, I mean, the purple going on is actually pretty cool. But uh -huh. Hungarians are going to be running that. To be fair, once you couch at northern town, you can't really push out of it. It's just open ground between you and everything else. So you usually just put the guys in there and... Yeah, just have a nice little respite from, you know, the bloody battles of the Eastern Front. And you're absolutely right, the Hungarians did totally pick up that uh, furball in the sky. I think we just watched the 14th lose, what, two or three airplanes pretty quickly? I think so, yeah. If I, if I was keeping an eye on it. Another headship being brought to the south, and we want the 105s. They're looking all over the place. And they might get this 20 mil. Okay, no, just a little bit too far. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, going after the AA has definitely been helping out Astonish Man quite a bit. I really have to commend him for well, going so vigorously against him. Well, it has been allowing him to get the air power. It has been quite a surprise, but we are into phase C now. And as you can see, the airplanes are still not yet done over here for Knives. Uh, and indeed, the Eco is now deliciously on his side. Yeah, and probably due to, you know, how he built his deck attrition raise. He should be faring out better in the Stornis Man. He is still losing in terms of points and flags and all of that stuff, but he has 20 minutes to pull us back. He has all the time in the world to make a push somewhere. Indeed he does. I wonder if this airplane though, this Ju-88 going over enemy lines here, or this Nimrod, I don't know. Could he get a kill? Ground fire, I feel like, has been taking a little bit of a hit in terms of accuracy overall, which I don't mind. Yeah, for... I, I'm... Please. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm pretty happy with how, how it is so far. It probably would help if Astonished Man maybe has, like, another piece or two. He's bringing in a, another 40mm. But mm -hmm. with, with, with ground fire, it's really good idea to try to have a nice mix. You have your small 20 mils, your medium-sized 40 mils. I don't really find the heavy caliber AA guns really work that well, but it's just my personal preference. Only as anti-tank positions. Yeah. Yeah. But when you have to use them as anti-tank guns, something has probably gone wrong already. Or or you're an 88. Or oh, you're an 88. <laughs> or oh, you're an 88, yeah. Yeah, you can put them in forests now, I forget about that. Yeah. You can of put course the heavy you can. Like 88s in forests. You can't see the 88 for the trees. Yeah. Uh, but stovepipes are starting to ch um, 
pour fire on that central position. I am surprised by really how minimal the attempt has been to push into the town from where it is. I mean, we have four mm -hmm. squads, five squads of nearly either full or rather hefty troops. Just I'm, I would have expected a lot more of an aggressive position. Yeah, just bomb it, you know, shoot some HE cells into it, drop some smoke, and at close range, those STG troops are pretty much going to beat out the Hungarians, I'd say. Uh, the 4th to the south goes down over here for the 14th. We still have the cluster bomber again, just kind of chilling. Dear God, he's so slow. He, I, can, I could run faster than that. 285 kilometers an hour, that's nothing. <laughs> Uh, is he oh, stepping into an attack? Know. Maybe, maybe not. But we are seeing a little bit more engagement down to the south. He's got to be coming in soon. Nope, never mind. Bringing in two. Oh, he's bringing in some artillery first. Okay, makes sense. And Gennadyps will refuse to be caught off guard. Two more ME-109s going in after that uh, ground attack. Now, oh, Kralov AAO from the Hungarian side is ranking Ralph Rao, and oh, this could be a time that the CR-47 could get, or 42 could get something. Will they, will they be successful? I don't know, but I feel like they've, they, that, was that a bait and switch? Another one gets brought back in, so one, what? one leaves, another one comes in, and the other one, ME-109, I think it was getting pounded into near pace, if not even totally. Yeah. It's going to be able to get behind the Stuka and get some hitch in. Will it be enough to shoot it down now? No, it won't. I don't know. I'm not sending that Stuka in any further. That guy is smoking already. Oh, but he's smoking in the bandit can. He, he's going to make it. And oh, it's, that's going to be a good cluster hit. I was going to say, yeah, that right there is the way to go. And yes, even if he dies now, he can die a happy pilot. Yeah, if he's already paid himself off in terms of in terms of price. Oh, Hell, if he loses the CR forty two as well, he's oh he's lost both, but it still is uh, worth it. It takes another plane. You do not want to be a fighter uh, pilot or a bomber in this engagement. It's been no. brutal. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And now the run, yeah, to die on Gneb side, even as he caused a little bit of um, row damage to the hatchery as he crash landed. I wouldn't really call it a landing. All they just crash in general. It was more of an Indiana Jones landing. Mm hmm. Uh, we are seeing more artillery being brought onto the field over here for Astonished Men. He's got a couple 149s to start sprinkling around. Uh, he still has a 40 mil who's not unloaded yet to the north. But down to the south, we are going to see that one uh, heads are being repaired. So now he's got two committed anti tank platforms, which is a good thing considering the fact that there's more tigers on the hunt. Yeah. Yeah, Astonished has been doing a really good job this fucking. But the major two positions run in the town in the wrong place down south. It's not, you know, quick and easy victory that you kind of want with Vanguard. But he, he's holding, and he's still keeping the defensive momentum in his, in his favor. There you go, the 40 is now unloaded. And I think we have another cluster bomb moving into the south, stepping into another attack run here. And I don't know if the 14th really has anything left to send up. I feel like they've, they've been losing planes left, right, and center. No, yeah, sorry, I, an, an artillery one. Yeah, I feel I feel like in terms of our power, Gnebs is probably running out of quite a bit. He really needs to start investing in some more anti air if he has it. But he's got uh, like two Tigers coming in down south. And I, I'm, I'm thinking for Gnebs is best bet. It's honestly just push right through the middle in the complete open ground, because in an open ground engagement like that, nothing can really, really beat you in against the Hungarians. You want to be trying to just push the open field rather than playing to the Hungarian strength of fighting in more close quarters engagements. I guess that makes me kind of curious then why he's not pushing his tigers along this central flag the one lone flag being slowly compressed on the side by red yeah in my I, mind then why why not push along that center line rupture the center and roll up one flank exactly that's probably his best bet that he can do but at the same time i understand why he's not doing that mainly just use the fact it's really scary just pushing open oh pushing over large open ground even if you are playing the division that has you know complete utter long range tank superiority it's still 
you you should do it. But I I understand the hesitancy because it's something that you're not really supposed to do a lot of the time. Well, I guess I can also understand we have two forty mils that that actually control a hefty amount of territory. Now he would be able to engage them in detail, mm -hmm. but that's still I guess like you said a very very difficult idea. Yeah. But it's something that you really should do because you can, you could, like you said, you can just rupture the center with the tigers, bring out some anti air, bring out some three support, you know, the standard attack support, and then you can just catch all of these flags over here. Pretty easy peasy, there's no cover the Hungarians can hide behind, and with a big bloody 88 you can make mince meat out of anything that comes up against you. No, a cluster bomber up north. Yes, indeed. Well, there is a tiger that has been taking some shots from this 40 mil, and I dare say there's no anti-air there whatsoever. The closest bit is that a couple of ME-109s racing on in, which they might be able to get that engagement. Yep, yep, that was clutch. Getting the full back on the JU-87. Yep, that was really clutch. But the question is, will anything die? Well, that's it. This fuck wall's gonna go down. Mm-hmm. That, that was a very good, very good engagement to have from Gunnar's overall knocking out two planes without having to uh, lose any of his. That said, looking back down to the south, we see Tigers moving in super close to the front line, which I guess I get, but even a Terran with a nice little bit of a wee flank yeah. could get some shots. That's it's not that's not the place you really want to be throwing tigers, especially so close together. Like even just pushing them along like the road in that that connects to the flag down south, that would be the much better use of the tigers. That's true. I cannot help but agree. I mean, all these tigers have just kind of said, "Oh, we're playing tanks at twenty paces. That'll be fun." <laughs> but yeah. uh, they move even a smidge to the southeast and that Hatcher is going to have a field day. Mm hmm Yeah, Hatcher should be able to get first shot on the Tigers. Well, the Tigers are too south out, so we'll, we'll have to see. Oh, that's a lot coming in up north from, from Ganebs. Oof. That's just yeah, throwing in everything in the kitchen sink. we got Luxes, we got Stugs, we got Grenadiers, big leads, just just a, a little bit of everything at 14 first off. A nice little 14th infantry starter pack. Yeah, he's lucky that um, there is not a cluster bomber there. Mm hmm. Because that could have turned that into hell. Uh, meanwhile, the Hetzer is going to start to engage the Tiger. We have a transmission destroyed. The classic now, German problem. It's, it's time to back up, though, if I'm that Hetzer. I take shots and run, and he pays for it with his life. He did knock out a Tiger, so that was, that was a worthwhile trade in the end of the day, in, in terms of points. In terms of points, yes. In terms of overall kind of deck, eh. Yeah, it's true. You don't get, you only get, like, four, four six yeah. With, with, <laughs> with Hungarians, and those are your only quote-unquote proper tanks. And quote-unquote... Oh, Heavy let's emphasis on the crews. Also acknowledge how lucky uh, Gnipes is over here that the artillery is not accidentally finding his entire vehicle logger. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I'm I'm really wondering what he's gonna plan to do with that. Oh, it seems like he's just gonna push into the middle through the uh, through the town, which would probably be a pretty good place, especially for Luke's. Well, it helps that for the most part, uh, the Hungarians are completely blind to this, but there's now one Toldi coming on in, the Command Toldi. And this could be either amazing or it could suck. And judging by the fact that we have two Lukes leading the way, it's going to suck. And yep, there, he's already dead. Cool. Cool. But alright. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Gnabs, I mean, I, I, he is starting to run out of time now, with only 8 minutes left till a minor defeat on his end, but he is making this big play finally through the center town, unloading all the infantry. If he manages to get some good artillery support to, uh, you know, stun up some of the Sonus Man's infantry and stuff, he should do pretty well. Uh, can we just be mildly amused by the fact that 
it's a minor defeat. A defeat's a defeat. <laughs> that's that's very true. That's very true. It's, it's always weird how they how they define it. And it's like okay, oh, you lost, but it's not really an executable, of, you know, offense. Mm -hmm. It was more like you had a bad day with the lotto. <laughs> It's even uh, it was even weirder in War Game Red Dragon because if you had like if if the victory point was only a ten percent difference, it was considered a draw and not a victory, even though one side actually got more points than the enemy. Okay. It was that's very it was a bit bizarre. Strange. It was kind of good Joe in a sense. Because if it was a very close match and one side wins, quote unquote, it's technically a draw, so both sides can feel good about it. You know, participation awards and all of that. At long last, by the way, the artillery is shifting over here to the center line, but it's going to be a little bit too late. Which is just a shame, because had he been able to push it there a minute earlier, 45 seconds earlier, this push would not be as effective as it is. Indeed, and yeah, this is this is exactly what Knebs needs to be doing. If he can just keep on pushing right through, get his tigers, get the mechanized motorized stuff down that road, and try to shut down the other side of the town, he should be he should be in a really good position. I will say though, I'm not fond of the fact that he's got what you would say about 600, sorry, 400 or 500 uh, points of equipment, and within a kilometer of each other, it seems a little bit. Yeah, uh, to, to be fair, yo, it's a pretty tight area to push. You, there's not really many, many places to really spread out your guys. It's just a, it's just a nasty area, truth be told. I suppose I could see that. It's a bit of a gripe, I suppose. And we're back to twelve, twelve. Finally, bringing even Stevens up. Northio is on this man. He's pushing. And he's pushing pretty hard. There's really not much here from Ganesh. He spent all of his income down down in the middle. But he's bringing in some reinforcements trying to stop his northern push. And that's going to be one, maybe two fags to the Hungarians here. Well, now here's the question. It's basically whether or not it can last just long enough to make it another six minutes. Yeah, it's a truly has to survive. It's just, it's another six minutes, but at the same time, with attrition rates and whatnot for the Hungarians, that could be a very tough call. I mean, we've seen him bring out a bunch of toady command tanks now, so I think he's starting to run out in terms of Hungarian armor. So, and then probably of infantry too, to be fair, so we'll just have to see how it plays out. Well, it doesn't, it's not helped by the fact that it looks like he's, he's running dry on even supply. You look at a lot of his artillery oh, pieces, yeah. they are running low on shells, and there ain't no more coming around. But he still has those uh, artillery observer planes being brought out, getting another lovely strike into the town, and that's probably a very good idea to run away as three Messersmiths are trying to get on his ass. True, but uh, the Nimrods have been worth their weight in gold. Mm-hmm. But, but not enough to stop that many Messerschmitts, but the Fokker the 189, does get away, just in the nick of time. Fresh artillery shells come on down, slow guys up a little bit more. Again, if they can either stress out or just plain out kill the Stroke 3G, um, he's not quite able to, you know, upgrade to 4 LTE just yet. Um, <laughs> then... Well, then maybe he has a chance. Maybe he's got a chance at this at this town. Of course, as I say that, another command tank goes down. The stuff's just too light. It is. It is. But damn, this this, this town post could really. If he just cut, I mean, he's got like two flags that are pretty close to Ganev's town post. He can just capture him. You know, maybe rupture just right through the middle, and that's really his best bet. But see, to a certain extent, this is what I'm talking about, which I feel like there should be a lot more of a spread mm -hmm. from uh, Ganeeps over here, Ganeeps, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, definitely, like, get get the Tigers through the middle, open ground, bring bring some recon guys, whatever. You really need to try and capture these flags here with some good old German thick armor. Two Cs. Two Cs, yeah, all capital letters. 
There is one ridiculous Terran in the north who is... I'm not going to say going behind enemy lines, but it kind of feels like he should be at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's going to sneak up on some uh, SCKFZ7s, and they're not going to be happy. Not not one bit. Not one bit. Oh, the Pack, pack 40 is coming around, Joe. It's only one guy on the Pack 40, so... It's a little bit, little bit dangerous for either side. Well, dangerous is middle name. Mm-hmm. Also dead, but you know, the idea is still remains. Yep. Yeah, and the Tron, he's gonna try and get to the other, to the other side, I guess. Why are they yeah, just trying to engage? Okay, whatever. I think he's trying to get the 7. Yeah, but the Pack 40 does get an eye on. Oh, but he has AT shells on, so he's gonna shoot the Hussars, and that's gonna give Raid's position. Oh no. But fortunately, the Tron is not in. Oh, does he have line of sight to shoot the Pack? No, he doesn't, so... I had this little, little bit of a silly engagement up in all fair to be, to be entirely truthful. Meanwhile, along the center line, stuff continues to move rather slowly. Uh, and if I were astonished, man, do you go and rush more forces to the center, or do you just continue to work the flanks? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. I, I think his probably best bet is... If he can get like another good artillery strike with his uh, artillery observer plane, you know, I just keep trying to push the middle. But it's is the tiger down the road at the same time, and it's going to be a rather big nuisance. If you're probably going to drop some smoke on it, but to block its line of sight. Yeah, this is this is getting really, really close, frankly. Even even though Gnabs is nowhere in terms of winning in in terms of actual points. He, I mean, he's got three bloody slugs here up north. An astonished man, he needs to hold on to his you know, one flank advantage, which is five minutes. And I feel like it's going to be a really tough ask. Understandably, though, too. I mean, if you think about it, the 14th is supposed to have that staying power. It's supposed to mm -hmm. be able to continue to take body shots the entire time and still come out without a hangover. Yeah, um, he's got a lot of lovely availability. And especially the way, too, if you're going to build balance, you're just going to be playing for that late game. Yeah. But as always, let's just give a couple of props over here to the Hungarians who hang tough despite having been set up for your Vanguard deployment. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like always, me and Khan, we're, we're pretty biased when we see Hungarian divisions out. They're a lot of fun to watch, and the Sonus Man has been putting on a pretty good show. But yeah, it's it, it's getting close. I'm I'm really curious to see who who's gonna come out on top. Yeah, and I, I guess I'm a little nervous about that, especially when you see down to the south, we actually see some more infantry being brought on in. Oh and no! Storm pioneers now too. So storm pioneers, seekerlings. Uh, this could be throwing back the southern arm pretty easily. Yeah, it's very ballsy rushing them in without unloading sooner. But it's going to work. It, it's going to work. I'm actually really surprised that 40mm gun didn't shoot on the APM. That could have been some easy kills. Well, I don't know if it's, if it's being set to efficient or if it's hold fire specifically. I think it was an efficient shot, but maybe... I have no idea right fired. Probably... probably that must have been on the hold fire command. Nonetheless, it's shooting now. And it's uh, yeah, so you're getting some lovely hits on these stooks. Tigers. There's oh. a tiger, definitely a tiger in there, oh my. Yeah. Oh, but a Nimrod at close range, though, he is just wrecking havoc down south on these infantry targets. A Nimrod in a forest is not something you want to run in, run into, especially in rural life as well. Yeah, I was going to wonder exactly how that, that um, real-life advice was going to be able to hold steady with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's engaging the tiger. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, it's... Sight damaged. It's, yeah. Not good. Not good. And sight destroyed, thoroughly. Yeah, I'm not sure he can walk that one off. But um, pack 40 down south. Could kill a tiger. From less than 150 meters, come on. Uh, that was pathetic. Faust Patron, you're up! Oh, yeah, with the Hungarian leader. Come on! If he can knock out this tiger, he can he can pretty much stop his push down south. He's flanking with the Toronio instead. Just 
absolutely crazy place on both sides as Kneps is moving up his infantry but it's getting pinned down in the open but it's run around the flank. Tiger goes down to something. Hetzer. Hetzer? Hetzer's... Ah yep. oh, damn, Hetzer's gonna hatch. Jeez, and that's gonna shut down that push down south from, from Gnebs. Yeah, things are just kind of absolutely nutty now. Abso absolutely crazy. Like the triple stoog to the north. Oh, yeah. Stoog, man. And triple stoog to the south, as well as an entire company of infantry. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this, this I think the curtain is falling over here on the Hungarians. I'm not sure they can stick, they can stay with this. Yeah. Hands, throw in the next batch of recruits. Well, and that's it. Yep. That's it. it. It's practically an Austrian battalion down here. Now we got Sikarungs. You see, yeah, he's bringing in some Sikarungs there instead. Oh, not not bad infantry, frankly. I see pretty good in the field for like your like reserve infantry, croat on croat. Well, but, yeah, like like you said, astonished man. He's you know, for every minute that yeah, he's not you know getting that flag advantage, it's really hurting him. We're still getting closer and closer. Four, four minutes twenty. Mm -hmm. And the last little bit of, of materials being brought on in. It's been less and less these last couple of minutes here. I can kind of feel him being like, "Do I throw in my last reserves right here, right now?" Exactly. That cough right there. <laughs> that right there is is astonished right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I was so astonished by the play. I just had to start coughing, but really, it was it was the water. Uh, I thought you were using your smoke screen attack. <laughs> Which, by the way, Detective Pikachu, surprisingly charming movie. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, exactly. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. That's what happens when you're on a plane for seven hours. Uh, well, I mean, four tens being brought on in to start returning the, f the favor to Astonishment's troops. Yeah, knocks out a rather vital Pack 40 gun there, so really good hit. But Asanas, man, he's he's still running. It's three minutes, just three minutes now. But we got the huge infantry and Stog Blob down south. We got the Stug Bloop up north. These these are flags that Ganebs can can flip in these next three minutes or so. Especially the far northern run. I think there's not really much going to be stopping. A huge pioneer grenadier unit. Yeah, but uh, if you think about it, yes, there are stuff to the north, but just how much stuff over here for Ganebs or Ganibs, whatever you want to call him, he just got to way too much. When you have triple shooks in support, forget anything else. You have triple shooks in support in the north and south. Yeah. Do you think he's not brought the tigers because he was concerned about the expense? He's, he's got quite a few out by now. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I really, really use the tigers more, more in the center. To be entirely honest, it seems like he's thrown them away a little bit, just keeping them on the flanks. But yeah, yeah. The in infantry up north is running into a little bit of issues. Running into like the toady and the run flame for a dude. Just need to get these stunks into better positions. I mean, it's only like two minutes left. You might as well just push everything. Yeah, so but this is also at this range too. The, the DP grenadiers really should be to be con competitive with, especially the command troops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can get in close and knock out the toady with a good old RPG strike, or Panda Power Strike being a bit more accurate here, you should be able to get this flag and knock out one leader. There we go, uh, a toady up north is pretty much going to die, and now he just needs to catch his one flag up north, one minute left to try and stabilize. Getting, it's getting tight. Twight is a tiger. Well, we have seen our fair share of them in this particular match today. Oh, yeah, we've seen quite a few of them. So if the Hungarians can't hold this out for another 60 seconds, what are the keys to success? Well, how were they able to come out on top? Uh, just just playing the flanks really well. And, yeah, I mean, 
like you said, at the start of the match, flanks are really going to be the best place for the Hungarians to do the uh, Hungarian magic. And it's definitely worked out. Stoner's man doing some lovely flanking maneuvers, good infantry plays, using the forest and cover to his advantage. Try and beat out the more long range focus 14th. Oh my gosh, is he going to lose that last flag to the north with yeah. 20 seconds to go? Oh, that's brutal. Uh -oh. <laughs> a sliver of HP can holding on just with, you know, off the ledge with his tip of his pinky. This you could breathe, blow on him, and he'd he'd fall off. This is that moment where you take like eleven units and you all attack move to one location. You know, sort of like that. Center. Sort of, sort of lights up in the in the you know at the bottom as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is seven per show from Ganabs is. Is flipping the table, so that's going to be another flank under his control. And I mean, even though there's a lot of points uh, that the Sonic Man has to, yeah, that Ganeps has to come back to. I mean, once you get the momentum is stays of the game, you you pretty much run. Things I desperately want to agree with you. I really do. But I'm also seeing just way too much resistance from a couple of, you know, pretty crappy tanks. Mm-hmm. Down south? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're holding for now, but there's also a lot of angry Germans on the other side. No, that, that stock blob, so packed together, is a really nasty thing to go up against. I don't really think Astonish Man has much in terms of material to deal with it. No, I don't think he does either, but that, I don't think that'll, that'll prevent him from trying to hold steady until he loses a couple more flags, which, all things being equal, still might be pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, he's, he lost the uh, northern flag now. It's going to flip things back to a 12 trove. So, Astonish Man, he just needs one flag for 20 seconds. All he wants for Christmas. Or Halloween. Or well, are the two front flags, I get it. Yeah. Just, just anything, anything. And I don't know. He's got to route this infantry to the south. And it's gonna get closer mm -hmm. and closer here. And yes, he shows the Hungar Hungarian recon behind enemy lines here, just, just chill it out. Maybe amazed he hasn't got spotted. There's even a larger recon squad too. This is true. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think Astonis is going to push down south. He's been pretty much surrounded here. Don't lose a big chunk of ground. Maybe it's going to come to up north. I think he's just going to just slightly sliver onto that flag in the northern town. Ganebs is bringing some pack 40s up here immediately to try and try and resolve this issue. Oh, it's just the the boat is penetrating, but it just needs to. Flip around a little bit south to cap our flag. Well, one of those guys is dead. Oh. Okay, that's absurd. They really should have flipped at this point already. Yeah. You know, the best thing about mirror matches is that I can't be accused of having a bias. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. The, the Axis Force is going to win one ray or another. Also very accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, worth noting in the meantime, which made me think about it, we are, I think, in the middle of considering signups for the next season of the Steel Division League. Yeah, it's going to be starting September 30th, if I recall, and we should have one of the first replays up for the SD League by, by next week as we get around to casting. And there we go. That's oh my gosh, he's got literally one second of life in him. Jesus oh my Christ. gosh. Okay, kill the infantry in the center. That's all you need. Everyone, attack move right there. Just And that's what he's doing. Thank you very much. Yeah, just get the get the Tehran in. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was a nutty match, Colin. Absolutely crazy. Oh my gosh, the two ten files. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely put them away. Mm-hmm. The, the, I, I like how he got exactly five, 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 five kills in terms of uh, points. 
That's a, yes. that's a very nice number. And a very nice rounded numbers. 4,700. Really make, making this victory screen all nice and clean. So thank you very much for that, guys. Some of the anti-tank over here is having a field day. Um, a 75 mil, three, four, five, six half tracks, a couple MG, a couple of heavy vehicles. <laughs> There's been some real standouts over here. Nimrod, Nimrod three Holy kills. Shit. Nimrod, four kills. Tron, the uh, So, literally his name, So. Knocking out a tiger. Then, like you said, the two tens are just going absolutely ham. Yeah, losses, 45 mil does pretty good. Yeah, both 45 mils. Tiger. Real, real crazy match. Especially, especially for those kills on the Hungarians. Good God. Good God. Well, look at this way. At least they didn't go hungry. They, they're, they're not going hungry, that's for sure. That's well, for sure. The way they, yeah. thirsty, they were definitely thirsty for glory, but hungry they were not. Um, but knowing that... Fantastic game on either side. Um, if you were with us through the entire time, I'm sure you thought just as much as we did. Didn't know which way that was going to go. I actually thought that Astonish was going to peter out at the absolute last second. I was going to be just crushed. Same. I thought he was just going to lose that momentum eventually and going to have to finally, you know, just make that breakthrough, so to speak. But once again, like we, like we said before, like push, push the center of the map. Push open field, guys, if you have the tank advantage, don't feel afraid to do that, because it's usually where the enemy has nothing, nothing there. Indeed, indeed. But with that in mind, any real massive uh, final thoughts? Man, it was astonishing. Oof, I see what you did there. <laughs> but I wonder folks... if Astonished Man appreciates all these astonishing puns that we make about his name. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Nothing. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, folks, for more bad yep. puns, check in in a couple of days. But until then, I'm a con work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.